In the heart of the New Testament, nestled within the profound writings of the Apostle Paul, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 shines as a beacon of hope and transformation. These verses declare, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with crispy grace you have been saved. This passage not only encapsulates the essence of the Christian faith, but also offers deep insights into God's character and his interaction with humanity. The richness of God's mercy. The journey begins with understanding the richness of God's mercy. Mercy, in its essence, is not giving us what we rightfully deserve. As humans, our nature and actions often lead us away from God, into a realm of spiritual, death separated from the one who gives life. Yet, God's response to our state is not one of condemnation, but of compassion. His mercy flows from a heart that sees beyond our flaws and failures. This richness is not about quantity, but quality it is profound, boundless, and transformative. The great love of God, central to our text is the great love with which He loved us. This love is not based on our merit or worthiness, but is unconditional and unearned. It's a love that chooses us even in our lowest, darkest, moments even when we were dead in our trespasses. This divine love is the bedrock of our faith, reminding us that our value in God's eyes does not fluctuate based on our performance or productivity. It's a steadfast love, a love that refuses to let us go, a love that is determined to bring us back to life. Made alive in Christ, the apex of God's mercy and love is found in the action. He took making us alive together with Christ. This aliveness is not a mere improvement of our old self, but a complete transformation, a rebirth into a new life. Being made alive implies a radical shift from death to life, from alienation to intimacy with God. It is in Christ that this transformation is possible it is through His life, death and resurrection that we are invited into a new existence. This new life is not a solitary experience, but a shared reality with Christ. In Him, we find our true identity and purpose. By grace you have been saved. The culmination of this divine interaction is grace by grace. You have been saved. Grace is the unmerited favor of God, a gift that we cannot earn through our efforts or good deeds. It is freely given underscoring the point that salvation is not a reward but a gift. This grace is both humbling and empowering, leading us to gratitude and transforming how we live. Understanding that we are saved by grace means recognizing our complete dependence on God for salvation. It challenges our pride and self-sufficiency, inviting us into a life of faith and reliance on Him, living out our salvation. How, then, shall we live in light of these profound truths? First, by embracing our identity as beloved children of God, deeply loved and transformed by His grace, this identity shapes our interactions, priorities, and decisions. Second, by living as people of grace, extending mercy and love to others, reflecting the heart of God in our world. Our lives become a testimony of the grace that saved us, compelling us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. In conclusion, Ephesians 245 invites us into a story much greater than Ourself is a story of mercy, love, transformation, and grace. It's a reminder that at the heart of our faith is a God who loves us with an everlasting love, a God who brings us from death to life, and a God who saves us by His grace. As we meditate on these truths, may we be filled with awe and gratitude for the divine love that encompasses our lives, and may we be empowered to live out this grace in every aspect of our being.